Okay, so here is my PDF file that I want to password protect, which as you'll know, if you try to password protect it in the free Adobe Reader, you're prompted to pay for the full version of Adobe Acrobat. However, it's a little known fact that you can password protect a PDF without having to pay Adobe's premium subscription or without having to install a free office suite like Libra, which as an aside is an excellent free alternative to Microsoft Office. All you have to do is use Adobe's free online tools, which you can access by Googling Adobe PDF Online and clicking on this result for PDF Online Adobe Acrobat. Clicking on the link will take you to this screen. Now the secret is to ignore all this stuff at the top of the page, which is basically just Adobe offering you a free trial of their premium Acrobat software. Instead, scroll down below the fold to this area here, where you'll find many of their premium features available as free online tools. And the one we want is here at the end, Protect PDF. Click on the big blue button to select your file. Navigate to your PDF, click Open, and then you're prompted to create a password. Retype the password, click on Set Password, and Adobe will now protect your document. Having added the password, you have two options. You can either sign in and create an Adobe account to store your document in Adobe's cloud, which can be quite handy if you want to share it via a link with others, but in most cases, you'll probably just want to download it to your computer like so. So now if I minimize Chrome, there is my new password protected version of PDF, which when I open it, you can see I'm prompted for the password. And just to prove that the exact same process works on Mac, here is the same PDF without a password. I'll open up Safari, Google Adobe PDF Online, and click on the link for Adobe's online tools. As before, scroll down to the bottom of the page and choose Protect PDF. Navigate to your PDF file, mine is saved to my desktop, click on Upload and give your PDF a password. Choose Set Password, and when it's ready, click on Download. And there is my new password protected PDF opening in preview without the need for any additional software. So that is how to password protect a PDF for free on Windows and Mac. If you found the video useful, you're definitely going to be interested in learning my top five free security apps. In this video, I thought I'd share with you the five apps that I use every day to protect my data from snoopers and to protect my accounts from being hacked. If you're familiar with my videos, you may already be able to guess what apps these are because I've created several videos about them before. And for that reason, I won't be going through the ins and outs of how to install, configure and use them, but instead I'll share with you why I like them and my recommended alternatives. So let's get started. And first up, we have Signal. For me, Signal is still the king or queen of private chat messaging. In terms of features, these days there's very little difference between the likes of Signal, WhatsApp, and Telegram. They all offer end-to-end -end encryption, voice and video calling, you can send all kinds of media, and they all offer the view once feature. WhatsApp, to be fair, has been making great strides recently by implementing things like end-to-end -end encrypted backups, which, if that's something that's important to you, is something that's worth considering because it's something that Signal doesn't offer. That being said, where Signal always wins out for me is on the information that it collects about you, or rather, the lack of information that it collects. There is no better way to highlight this than viewing the privacy information displayed on the Apple App Store. If we scroll down to privacy information, here's what WhatsApp and Telegram potentially collect about you. As you can see, the list for WhatsApp is almost endless and Telegram doesn't fare much better. And then here's what Signal collects. It's as simple as that. When it comes to privacy, nothing compares to Signal. So as Elon Musk and Ed Snowden both agree, start using Signal. And next up we have Bitwarden. Bitwarden rose to prominence as an alternative to LastPass when LastPass stopped being free. Bitwarden will generate long, complex passwords and store them securely in an encrypted format, ensuring that you only ever need to remember one password, the one you use to access your Bitwarden vault. It works on every platform imaginable, ensuring handy access from all your devices, 
And it does all of this for absolutely free. But if you did fancy outlaying 10 bucks a year, you'll get two-factor authentication, encrypted file transfers, and a few more useful features. If you're not fussed by using a third-party app for passwords, Safari, Edge, and Chrome all offer their own built-in password managers. But the reason I stick with Bitwarden is because it's open source and it's third party audited, ensuring that it adheres to the strictest rules on privacy and any bugs are quickly identified and patched. If you'd rather not pay the 10 bucks a year for Bitwarden's two-factor authentication add-on, then I recommend Authy. I have done many videos on two-factor authentication, so I won't waste your time repeating myself, except to say that two-factor authentication really is your best protection from having your accounts hacked. So enable it wherever you can. To be honest, if you already use Google or Microsoft Authenticator, then I don't recommend switching to Authy. There really isn't much difference. The only reason I went for Authy is that I like how it has both a desktop and mobile app, which I find much more convenient than hunting around for my phone every time I want to log into one of my accounts. Just be sure that you enable backups and store that backup password safely in your Bitwarden vault. Next up, we have ProtonMail. And where end-to-end -end encrypted messaging apps have become the norm, thanks to WhatsApp and Signal, sadly, the same cannot be said for email, which is crazy given the amount of emails we send every day and the confidential information that we send in them. For a while, Gmail has offered confidential mode, which allows you to add some security options, such as passwords and expiry dates, but it's really pretty limited. An alternative to confidential mode is Virtue, which is a Chrome plugin that sits on top of Gmail and it does a proper job of encrypting your emails. But that being said, it is cumbersome when used across all your devices. And then there's ProtonMail. ProtonMail is great. It can be accessed through a browser and has apps for iOS and Android. It's very easy to set up and start using and offers many of the inbox features you'll be familiar with if you use Gmail. It does a proper job of encrypting your email and any attachments, and it ticks all the boxes in terms of being open source and audited by third parties. What's more, the company behind ProtonMail is based in Switzerland, which is the absolute epicenter for information privacy, so you can be confident that your data is well protected. If I didn't use ProtonMail, I would probably go for Tutanova, which is similarly very good. The final app that I'm going to recommend is Brave Browser. The reason I like Brave is that it implements all the privacy features I want in a browser straight out of the box. As soon as you start using Brave, you'll enjoy ad-free browsing, safe in the knowledge that no one is tracking your activity. It's built on the Chromium browser, so supports many of the same plugins you'll find in Chrome. And if you do enable ads, you can earn crypto whilst you browse. So you're actually getting paid for watching those ads. The only setting I would change when installing Brave is to use Secure DNS, which is available on most browsers, including Chrome. Search for DNS in the settings, click on Security, and there you'll find the option to enable Secure DNS, and you can use one of the recommended providers. So there we have it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for lots more useful tips and tricks. And you might also be interested in learning how I block spam calls or the worst apps for draining your phone's battery. Until next time, my name is Anthony. Thank you very much for watching.